And good morning. It's just after six o'clock here in Walla Walla. And what you're looking at here is a, uh, a spiral flute end mill in the cutter grinder. And uh, this is a grinding finger here or a tooth rest. So if you're going to grind this thing, you just that uh, and uh, put it on the tooth rest, put a little tension on it, then advance the table, put a little tension on the uh, work head. Okay, now I'm going to go forward. See? So that would grind that face, okay? Now there's two angles. Um, there's a primary and a secondary angle. And uh, so you gotta, you got to grind those two. So when you return, you just put a little tension on it and bring it back just like that, see? Then you go to the next tooth, okay? Then you get it on there, not too tight, not too loose, and then push it through. And it grinds, see? Rotates that and grinds it. All right, isn't that cool? It's really quite simple. <clears throat> now, if it's a straight flute cutter, um, then you mount the finger to the table. And uh, I'll pull the camera off and we'll go around uh, to the other side and kind of have a look, okay? And I can take it loose just like this. Kind of a tight angle there. Okay, I'll work my way around here. <laughs> I got a tripod to dance with and a jig bar here. I've got to squeeze by. Oop, move it a little bit there. Okay. Okay, we're around front here. And uh, I've got... Uh, there's two ways you can grind a cutter uh, with two different wheels. Now, this uh, cup wheel will give the flutes a flat grind, okay? And that, that's the advantage. Uh, uh, it gives a little bit stronger edge, um, a little more support. Now, if you... What, the hollow grind, they call it that because it's done with just the straight wheel back here, see? And it'll leave a little bit of a radius on the flutes here. And uh, that makes it really, really sharp in, in a way. Um, and also, uh, uh, maybe the edge is a little bit weaker because of that, you know, little tiny bit of radius. So that's a decision you have to make. Now, um, uh, larger end mills like this are pretty easy to grind in the, in the standard workhead and keep it against the finger and use the table, right? Use the table movement. Now, the air bearing fixtures just kind of sit in place and have a, a, a tube that uh, you, uh, holds the cutter. And uh, I found those, I had one for a while, and I went ahead and sold it <clears throat> because um, um, I found uh, it just wasn't really economical uh, for me to grind small end mills with that. So I, I went ahead and sold it. and. Uh, you can actually grind quite small end mills with, uh, in the regular work head, but it, it can be a quite a bit more delicate, you know, having to do what I just showed you with uh, the larger ones. Okay, now there's another uh, thing going on here, and that's uh, some, some uh, grinders have a, a tilt head, and actually most of them do. So... This one, uh, to grind those secondary angles with a non-tilt head, you have to reposition the cutter or the, um, the cutter in relationship to the wheel. 
and they called it an indicator drop method. And uh, it's uh, ex explained here in the Cincinnati Manual. Let me get this over here. Um, let me see if I can find that. Now, I don't, this is... Uh, um, I got the service and parts list for the for the old old uh, bunch of notes and stuff. This is from a long long time ago. See, this is uh, uh, similar to the one I have. It's even got power cable feed. And I don't know how available these uh, manuals are, um, but here's all the stuff that you get back here. And I got the operating instruction manual um, for both the uh, tilt head and the fixed head like that, which I think this is kind of cool. And uh, I think it's 5.8 I'm looking for. We'll see. Back in here. What I wanted to show is all the accessories. I, I find I don't need a whole lot of that stuff. And... Uh, I just uh, really need a, a, a good standard work head. That, that's really important with the, with the Cincinnati. Okay, now we're getting into the cutter sharpening. Um, uh, you know, talking about uh, just basic uh, lining it up. Now, when we get back here, um, grinding, uh, you know, shows how to set up your arbors and yeah, here's the tilt head here. So they're talking about both of them, and I kind of like this manual for that, but I have to say this is the only uh, Cincinnati manual uh, that I've ever looked at. It talks about uh, building cutters here, or early cutters that the carbide or, or uh, high-speed steel was actually wedged in there with metal wedges. And it talks about sharpening those things. I, I've never seen a cutter like that. Okay, here's, uh, they start talking about the indicator drop method. So you, you put an indicator on the cutter and, uh, and uh, drop it. And there's a table here so you don't, uh, here they talk about the flat grind and the hollow grind examples. Okay, producing a clearance angle with the face of the grinding wheels. So we're starting to get into this um, drop method. Let's see, I want too many pages. Here's the chart. Okay, this is uh, H offset dimension, cutter clearance in degrees. So you find your degrees here, then it tells you how... Uh, in, in thousandths of an inch, how much to offset uh, your cutter head from center line to get those uh, clearance angles with the non-adjustable head, okay? So that's how it's done with the non-adjustable head. You got to do this. But, uh, you know, the uh, fully adjustable head, you just set it to the angle. So that makes it quite a bit easier. Now, um, you've, um, in an earlier video, I showed um, my homemade tool post grinder that I did build with precision bearings, and it's a pretty awesome little thing. I'm going to get more into that as it's been requested to uh, show how I built that and stuff, and I'll get into it more. But anyway, it can uh, be attached here to the top, and any tool post grinder, for that matter, uh, can be attached to the top of these. And then you can use that as a tilt head, or also um, do internal grinding like I uh, showed on earlier videos. So uh, this... Uh, is basically just a uh, um, a basic tooth rest here, and uh, I think this is a factory one. It's a piece of carbide. Uh, somebody broke it and braced it back together, but it works just fine. Now this device here, 
if I can show that. Uh, this was built, shop built at one time, uh, out at Hanford, I'm sure. And it's, uh, it's adjustable uh, for this two thrust uh, both ways. And uh, it also does another thing that's real interesting that I'll get into. Um, you can use it as a pantograph on the machine uh, for some limited, you know, uh, grinding. But uh, I think you might find that interesting. I can use that for... Uh, my wood shaper cutters, which is something I'm going to be doing, but it probably bore everybody, so I probably won't show that. But uh, I thought I would uh, just kind of touch on some of that stuff and uh, uh, talk about what I do with it. You know, I mean, I can, uh, this uh, cutter here I salvaged. And uh, I've got some more down here, too. Oh, a bunch of one-inch end mills. You know, this one's been ground before. You can see a step in it. It was a one-inch one, and they ground it down to 0 .950. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can do that yourself here. So, okay. Um, I will be back... Uh, with something. I got a bunch going. So, uh, okay. Have a good day. Bye.